<laughs> so, so welcome to Team Performance. Thank you for having me. Hello. Good morning, Team Performance. What we're going to do today is I'm going to ask you why you chose Avon and what has made you successful, and you just go with it because the platform's yours now. Okay, so you want me to go ahead and start right now, or are we waiting a minute or two yeah. for more? Or just, okay, go ahead and start. So, uh, again, uh, thank you so much for having me, and uh, hello and good morning to Team Performance. I hope your neck of the woods, you're having some good weather. I know there's been snow in some areas, and some people have rain, and I know everybody's just done with it. We are so ready for springtime, summertime weather. I think we can all agree to that. Um, so my story, Leslie, uh, begins in October of 2000. Um, at the time, I was pregnant with my third child, uh, Jacob, who is now 17. Um, and I had my other two little ones at home. So my one son, Zach, was about two and a half, and Kyle was about seven at the time. And I had been running prior to that a home daycare business, but I knew when I got pregnant with number three, I was so terribly sick in that pregnancy also that it was going to be really difficult to manage other people's children with my own kids. I was like, okay, Lisa, you're about to embark on your own daycare here with three of your own. So you probably need to do something else when the time comes. So, um, you know, I kind of went through the pregnancy and then um, I was a part of some play groups for my children and different activities with them. And one of my good girlfriends was selling Avon now, to be honest with everybody, I had prior used like Estee Lauder, Clinique. Um, I remembered Avon from childhood. My aunts used to always buy the Christmas gifts from Avon. So like I had the jewelry box and I had one of those teddy bears that you screwed the head off of and there was perfume inside and I knew of that type of thing. I think there was even, some of you may remember this, we had a Coca-Cola lip balm that was shaped in a Coke bottle and you took the lid off and it tasted just like Coca-Cola. I really wish Avon would come back with those. But anyway, yep. back to my back to my story. Those were great stocking stuffers when they were novelty yeah. items. But I had remembered those things. But honestly, I think all I had tried up to that point in my adult life was an Avon lady did come to my door in my apartments when I was living in an apartment and left a book and I looked through and I ordered a couple lipsticks because I was like, wow, these are super affordable on our budget. Let me try a shade or two. And that was pretty much it. I didn't continue to order from her. Avon was not something that I was thinking about, I guess you could say. So back to the playgroup. So my friend was selling and I went to her house one day and she just had all these Avon boxes everywhere. And I was like, Paula, like, how are you, how are you doing this? Like, what, how are you selling Avon? Doesn't it cost a lot of money to get in? I started questioning all these things thinking, you know, it's got to cost a lot to get all the stuff. It's got to be like, you know, she's going everywhere. So she goes, no, she goes, I'm just bringing it to bowling and the play group and to my husband's bringing it to his work. And I was like, so you mean to tell me you're just sharing this wherever you go and you're doing, you're just getting this much in your house. And she's like, yeah. And I clicked the money. I was like, huh? So it was like this light bulb went off because I was thinking, I'm here I am seven months pregnant. What am I going to do when this baby comes and, you know, I'm home with three kids. Do I start the daycare up again? Really didn't want to do that. Um, right. If I had to, I would have. But this, you know, I looked at like Pampered Chef. I looked at some other things. But a lot of those other things in direct sales do require you to go and work in the evenings to do the parties. Um, and I know that's a great way a lot of people make amazing money doing home parties. But for me with three kids, by the end of the day, you're pooped. You're exhausted. Right. Um, the last thing you want to do. And now some moms may differ with me on that and be like, I wanted to get away by the time, um, I, you know, right. evening came. But for me, I was a nursing mom as well. Kids did not want to take a bottle. So I'm like, I need to find something else. So long story short with all that, I jumped in and said, let's do this. So uh, at the time, the district manager came over. We signed the contract, $25, had a little presentation. And I thought, oh, my God, I'm an Avon lady. All right, <laughs> now, well, you know, how, what do I do next? You know, kind of thing. Now, I will say that in my – before I got married, um, there was a company out there called Cameo Coutures, which is a lingerie company. And I had a short stint with them before we got married. And I was doing home parties, but I was single. I mean, I was – with my fiance, I was 19 years old, with my fiance, I was living in South Florida, and I had a little bit of experience with direct sales with that. So I didn't really have a problem like 
selling product or demonstrating product. I found it that to be fun. Um, personality wise, it wasn't like a, a terrible shyness or anything with me. So um, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm at this now, but this is different for me from doing the cameo. How do I, you just share the book? I thought that's it. Just put it so <laughs> funny story, funny story I've got to share. And then we'll get into my, my why that I did it. So, cause some of you may relate to this story. So the district manager gave me a whole bunch of extra books. And for those of you that are new that are watching district managers were here for many, many moons and they just discontinued them about what, six months ago, a year, maybe about a year, year now. About a year now. So um, at any rate, at the time, she gave me all these books and she said, here, you know, go put them, you know, go door to door, leave them wherever. Here's some extra books. So I was like, oh, my God, I have two cases of these books. I got to get wow. writing. So I, I can't remember if I I think I, I labeled them at the time. I went ahead and put labels on them. And so I was so excited. I went with the kids in my van at the time. I drove an Astro van. Put them in the car in the car seats. It was like a gold Astro van, like the battle wagon, you know? Got in the battle wagon. And I was so excited. Now, the kids, remember, I had a newborn. There's like, at the time, a month old. The two-year-olds in this car seat and the seven-year-olds in the car. So I'm thinking, it's I could get the wagon out, but it was nap time. So I'm like, how am I going to do this? So I was like, all right, I'm going to go mailbox to mailbox. Now, you all know, maybe you don't know. <laughs> But do not, do not go like a mail carrier from mailbox to mailbox, opening the mailbox and shoving the books. I did that. I did not know that that is like such a no-no. Like you could get federal fined, whatever. But yep. I came home, let me tell you, it was one of those problems. I came home and I was like, call my district manager. Guess what I just did? I just went and put books in all the mailboxes. She went, you can't do that. You'll get a fine. I went, well... I guess ask for forgiveness after. I mean, if anybody calls me. So now I did have that moment also of like hoping the phone was going to ring. And this is a good this is a good thing for a lot of new people that may just put books out and then you come home and you wait and you wait. You're like waiting for that phone to ring, and nobody calls. And I think you have that sinking feeling of it doesn't work. The business, like I just did all this work. I stamped these books. I put right. nobody's calling me. Oh my God, nobody wants Avon. This doesn't work. You know? <laughs> and so I had yeah. that moment. I had that moment that I'm like, all right, I gave some to my neighbors and I and you know whatever. And then I followed up with those people that I had phone numbers of. And I did start getting the orders. But I did have that moment that a lot of new reps have where you're like, uh oh, nobody's calling me. Or my sister shot me down, or you know, this person said, I'm Avon, yeah. I'm, I'm, you know. That kind of thing. So anyway, um, I had that moment, learned that you can't just leave stuff everywhere and hope people are going to call you. Right. So, um, you know, so that was an early experience. But my, my reason for starting, I guess, goes to the fact that, you know, I was going to have the newborn, the two-year-old, and my son, and I wanted to be able to stay home with them and bring in the extra money that the daycare was no longer going to be providing um, I called it my diaper money and my McDonald's money, our pizza money, Chuck E. Chuck e. Cheese money, yep. um, and all that money in between when your paydays, my husband's payday was handling, like, the main bills in the household, and then he would give me so much for groceries, and then we would have that week stretch of, okay, uh, we're out of diapers, we are scrounging in the car for the extra change between the seats, um, you know, because I need to yep. get some milk, bread and eggs at the gas station and, uh, something's got to give, I got to do something. So, you know, it was like, no looking back, um, that Christmas of my first year in 2000, my husband wondered how I was getting some of the toys for the kids. And I told him Avon, Avon paid for this. And remember I started in October, December, I was already being able to afford to get the kids some Christmas gifts. Um, I think that was a big eye opener. And then from there, I was advertising to do, uh, you know, on my book somewhat. I wasn't being verbal, verbal yet about people joining my business. I may have here and there, but I wasn't being as loud as I should have been in the mm -hmm. very beginning. And I think a lot of new reps have that same fear. Yeah. Because they're like, oh, I don't want to get shot down and people are going to think I'm being pushy or this. But here's the thing. You guys are all doing yourself a disservice if you don't. Because right. if you don't, somebody else will. And it could be 
uh, somebody that's been real quiet about their Avon business, but it's like a neighbor or a friend of theirs, and then all of a sudden they join with them, um, kind of thing. And you know, I mean, it could be it could be anything. So I was kind of being quiet about it, but I did have like a little sticker. The district manager back then she used to print up labels and go stick these on your books. So I I kind of just did, you know, left it at that. A couple of my customers that were buying well, two almost at the same time came to me and said, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. I saw your sticker." immediately called the district manager. What do I do? I got two people. That we... <laughs> She's like, okay, good. This is good. This is good. I was like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what to do. So long story short with that, she helped me sign them up. We got them uh, going. And from there it was like, you know, she took me out. She told me, showed me how to, you know, kind of do some prospecting business to business. And then I never looked back. I took that double stroller with me with my two children and the seven year old when he was at school Whatever activities you're doing, for those of you listening, if you've got small kids at home and you're like, how am I going to do this with the babies and the kids? I'm telling you right now that if I can do it, you can do it. If you work a full-time job and you're like, I ha and you have kids, God bless you, first of all, because that's hard in itself. Right. Um, but, but also, you need to learn to incorporate your business into all the activities and everything that you're doing already. So your workplace, if you go out to lunch with friends, you need to just incorporate it. After work, do you have dance class with your child? Do you have to go to the gym? Uh, are you stopping at the grocery store? Being an Avon lady is like a mindset. And it takes some time to get yourself in that rhythm to where you remember, put the books in the car, put the books in the diaper bag, make sure you're sharing with everybody that you see. And in the beginning, everybody's kind of shy about that, I think. They're like, oh, we don't want to pester people. I don't want to, you know, but again, incorporate it and look at it as sharing with others. Because if you're not, again, somebody else will. And make sure in your own backyard, people know that you are the Avon lady. Brand yourself, you know? Right. Um, make sure that you're really letting people know. So uh, let's see, I'm losing my train of thought here. I get, I get like that. I get to where I, I get going and then it's like, woo. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully I'm not losing anybody with all this. So um, incorporate into your business, really important. Uh, diaper money, like I said, to reiterate, pizza money, that was a thing, paid for Christmas. The leadership kind of came in and then I was like, okay, wait a minute. So I can make money selling. Every two weeks, I can I can make a goal for myself and make a little extra money selling. But with this leadership thing, you're telling me that I could get a check every two weeks plus some bonus money plus this and maybe earn it. Okay, so I can take this little business for the change money that I need for little groceries or little this, that, the other, and I could double or triple that by doing this part of the business? So it was like, again... For those that are new listening that are like maybe fearful of jumping into the leadership arena, and maybe for you, it is just pocket money right now. Maybe for some of you, it is just, I'm buying for a discount. That's all cool. Maybe your circumstances will change at some point to where you're like, I want more from this. Um, or maybe something's happening in your life right now where you're like, I'm just not ready for that. But I will tell you this, if you're not being verbal about it, please at least put the sticker on the book with your reference code. Please at least put the bookmark in your, in your book. Okay. Because you could be losing the next big star because you didn't do that. And sometimes I think all it takes is that first person to call you or to say to you, Hey, I'm thinking about do this. And then you're like, Oh gosh, now it's happening. I guess I'm in it. I guess this is happening. And that was kind of for me. Like I knew it was like, Oh, maybe a possibility. And then when it happened, it was like, okay, Lord, is this a sign? I guess I'm supposed to move forward. <laughs> so uh, I did. And then I was like gangbusters. It was like, okay, now back then, and I'm not saying now, everybody still needs to get out there. Again, plaster your own backyard and work your general area. For those that have been in leadership a while, once you're qualified in a bronze ambassador or whatever, then you can go into the lead system if you want to embark into all that. But I still highly recommend everybody still work on the old-fashioned way because it does a couple things. Helps you with that skill set so that you can teach your team members how to do the same. Um, and, again, you're going to have team members maybe right in your own area that you can get together for lunch and, and do different things with them as a team. You end up with partners that you can do events right. with and things like that. So please, uh, if you're new to it, 
you know, find those people local, learn the skill of talking with people and sharing. And again, don't look at it as you're pestering people or you're driving people crazy. Look at it as what gift can I give to somebody? You know, they may very well be on hard times themselves, haven't told anybody. Husband could be getting ready to lose his job or her job or, you know, maybe a, something happened in their home. They got a big repair. And you come along and say, hey, by the way, if you if you know anybody that could use some extra money, I'm be, I've been with Avon now a couple months, and I am really having fun with this, and I'm looking for business partners. So if you know anybody, you know, just send them my way. Now, you'll notice. The approach that I've always used is I don't put people on the spot unless they're already asking questions about it. Um, if they come straight to me and say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, then we'll be like, oh, well, let's talk about it, you know? But if it's somebody that I'm meeting and I want to I want to just plant that seed, I want to plant the seed, the verbal seed to them about joining, I don't want to make them feel uncomfortable. So I say, hey, you know what? If you know anybody that could use some extra money. Now, many times with that, you're going to hear, me, I need extra money. And mm -hmm. they're going to pipe in. So yeah. um, it's just a seed plant. Make sure you're doing that. You'll be so surprised when you do that, how many people may um, jump in. So let's see. Um, I myself also, which some of you may have experienced in your business, whether you've been with Avon a long time or a short time, I went through and still do at times issues with anxiety um, and not anxiety uh, for fear of talking <laughs> with people. You? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So not anxiety with the fear of really talking with people. I have anxiety. Um, I don't like, I wouldn't say it's large. I don't like to be stuffed in to anything, but I also have uh, I had anxiety because of some stomach issues that I that I've had. And a lot of times when you have stomach issues, it goes along with the anxiety. It's like a two part thing. So mm -hmm. if one thing's happening, the other thing's happening. So for me, I went through many years of I'm never going to travel. I'm never going to even think about it, even though it looks fun. This girl's not getting on an airplane. This girl's not not doing it, not doing it. It's not happening. Um, although I had, there was a part of me that was like, I just wish I could be better. I wish I could be better where I could get on the plane and do that. Well, let me tell you, I really feel at some points in my business that Avon was therapy. I guess that's a good way to put it, therapy. And I say that because it's pushed me in ways that I didn't want to lose my business. But even though I was going through I don't want to leave the house because I don't feel well today and I might have a panic attack when I'm out and what if the kids are in the car and all this what ifs, what ifs. And there were many a times that I'd be in a grocery store with my, you know, toddler and abandon the whole cart, just pull him out of the cart, run out of the store, get back in my van and go home. I mean, and this was throughout my Avon business. This was ups and downs of health issues that I was having in my Avon business. For a long time, I never talked to anybody about it. I made a lot of excuses as to why I couldn't be at a meeting, why I wouldn't be going on that trip, or why I wouldn't be able to meet them somewhere, because um, I was embarrassed to say what was really going on with my fears. I found that by beginning to share that, I found in a lot of other Avon reps that they too have anxiety issues. Um, and, and maybe it's for some of them, maybe it's just related to talking to people, but for some of them, it's a debilitating and, and anxiety issues and panic disorder is a very debilitating, um, disorder. Um, a lot of people that don't have it or never experienced it really can't understand how debilitating it can be. Right. Um, I will tell you that it never stopped me. Even I was, I became agoraphobic for a whole year in my business where I barely left my house. Like if I had to leave the house, it was get to the grocery store, get the couple items and hurry up and get back home. And even that yep. was hard. Yes. Yep. So you've been there. So you know, it's hard. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So during that time, I was, many people would just say, I guess I can't sell Avon and I'm done. During that time for me, I went, I have a team. I worked hard. I'm going through a difficult time. How do I continue the business and keep it going even through this difficult time? And I had husband helping me. My customers were awesome. They came and picked up from me. Um, you know, he would do some book drops and I would, you know, let them know and they would come to the house. And 
very understanding of just going through a really tough time. And, um, you know, I finally got through that with the right uh, therapy and the right whatever. But I also think part of the therapy, this might sound cliche or weird, was um, the baby steps of getting back out of the house to go drop a few books. And if that me meant me telling myself, you're going to go today and you're going to go just do five books in the neighborhood and then you come home. If you can push yourself more than five books, all right. And I would do that. I'd be like, I would reassess. Are you feeling pretty good? Yeah. You know what? Go a street further. Go a little bit further. And I would. And I would do it. And then I would be like so accomplished. And then the next time, a little further, a little bit more. Again, I was in therapy and I had medication and, and things were, you know, I was working on it. And so I feel like in a lot of ways between if I didn't have the business, I guess that's the point I'm saying, I would have my children which that was another big motivating factor to get better and, you know, to continue, wanting to make sure my business worked was for my family. I didn't want to fail at that uh, because of health issues. But, right. you know, it was like you have to, I had to push through it. And um, in 2013, I entered the Makeup Maven contest. Some of you may remember that who have been around a while. And I almost didn't enter because I knew at the end, what if I win and I am being flown to New York City? And that was terrifying to me. But I thought, you know, yeah, there's so many representatives. I mean, what's the chance? <laughs> God, said, God said, you are going to be the Southeast Regional Makeup Maven. And you are going to go. And I went, Yay. let me tell you. I had Avon representatives. It was like at that point, I think I had to come clean with people and be like, okay, guys, I got, I got to be straight with you. I'm having all these issues and I need prayer because I'm, I'm terrified, like te to the point of tears, terrified to get on this plane. But you know what? I did it tears and all. I um, was super scared, but I did it and I had some issues there, but I didn't end up going on the bus tour. There were certain things I didn't do because it was like, you know what? Be proud of yourself that you got on the plane. You got here. You don't need to force yourself to do any more. You did it. You did enough. That's great. From there, though, there's been more trips. And each trip, if it wasn't for all these Avon opportunities and whatever, um, I don't think I would have, you know, gotten through it. Because Avon gives us so many amazing opportunities to travel and do things you never would imagine you'd be able to do if, you know, if you're on one income or, you know, even with two incomes or whatever, these are like free all expense paid trips. You're going to go. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So yeah. I really felt like um, it's helped me greatly there. Uh, let's see. I've got a couple of notes here. So part of my success has been consistency in everything that I do. Um, perseverance through those difficult times and always trying different things. So, Success is not, you know, from one representative to another, you're not going to find one rep that says she may have amazing success with tossing. Um, you know, I see Molly's on. Hi, Molly. She's she's had amazing success with tossing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot of representatives. And hello, Catherine and Susie. Thanks for watching. Um, there's a lot of representatives. It depends on maybe your area or how often you're doing it. But you know, I've had minimal success with tossing. Um, I will do it when I have the leftover books, but it's just another way to get your name out there and plant those seeds. And so I believe in it. I think it's something that um, if you have the budget for it and you've been doing Avon for a little while and you're not just relying on the tossing because it's kind of like a shot in the dark with that. You're putting them out there. You're branding yourself. You're getting your name out there. That's super important. But for the representative that is new and doesn't have any phone numbers yet to, to follow up with anybody, right. um, you may have that moment that I had with the whole mailbox situation where I was like, yay, that was my way of tossing back then. Put them in the mailboxes. Don't do that if you're watching this late. Don't do that. Um, and thought, you know, it was going to be good. And I know of a lot of representatives. There's many times I've done tossing and nothing. But you know what? A month later, somebody might call. Or... Right. You know, or it, it planted my name out there to where if they ever need somebody, they may call me later. So um, I use that with my older books. So that's one thing. Business to business for me is huge. If you have not stepped into offices in your area, 
please do so. Stop in. Just be friendly. Say, hey, I'm Lisa with Avon. How are you guys today? Uh, I'm just stopping in to see if anybody stopped by to give you some free brochures and some free samples today. Most of the time, they're going to say, no, nobody has. Well, wonderful. My name's, and I usually have my name tag on, of course, and I'll look at their name tag and be like, well, it's great to meet you, Jennifer. Here is my card. I see you're at work. I understand, and I, you know, I understand that, so, you know, I'm going to be quick here. Now, if there's a full room of people behind you, like a waiting room kind of thing, probably not the best time to have a 10-minute conversation with Jennifer behind the desk. Right. <laughs> you know? Probably need to be in and out. Uh, best time to do the business to business is right at lunch period, right when they're getting ready to go to lunch because they're finishing up. Um, they have a little more time. Hi, Kimberly. Um, and they're going to have a little more time to talk with you. Um, so pick good times. Don't walk in there 8 a.m. in the morning when it's like the zoo in, you know, in the right. office and expect them to give you much time. Um, if they clamor to the to the window and I'm offering free samples, which does happen, and they're like, free samples, who? It's like all the women's ears peek up, free lipstick, what, what? You know, and so you're like, yes, I have some free samples. They all come, they get the free samples, they get to meet me real quick. They say, look, get back to work. Who can I contact here to follow up? Who, is, who would be willing for me to give them a call? Oh, here's my cell. Okay, well, forever who helps me in the office, you're going to get a little discount on your order if you collect them for me. Does that sound good? And they're like, yes, I will help you. And by the way, if any of you ever decide you'd like to do this, here's my card. Call me. I'll be happy to help you get started. In those situations, I will mention it. Because I don't want one of them to be giving me all these orders and then say, why am I giving this Lisa girl who I've never met before all these orders? And I could be doing this myself. Why? Let's just order for me. I'll just sign up online. And you lose not just the initial customer, you right. lost the whole office. You know what I'm saying? You lost right. everybody. So when you're looking and talking with people, look at it as like that person could be my customer, that, cust that person could be a new team member, one or the other, or they could be nothing. But you, you know, if you don't ask, the answer is always no. That's always my big phrase, right. you know? Got to ask, okay? Um, so try new things. Step out of your comfort zones. Those that have fears, girl, I've been there. I understand. Uh, but sometimes you, you know, as you do things, just like riding a bike, it gets easier and easier to do. So, you know, do it once. Face your fear. Do it anyway. Get in there. And then the more you do it, it's going to get easier and easier. It's going to roll off your tongue like it's nothing. Okay? Right. Um, what's the worst that's going to happen? Uh, the funny story with that, and I don't know how much time we have. Are we... Are we good on time? I don't want to. Yes, we're good. Okay, okay. So I have a funny story with that. So when the kids were younger and I had the double stroller, I used to struggle to get the doors open. So I carried this basket <laughs> with books. I had the stroller. I'm trying to push a door open. You know, some people are nice. They see you come in with two kids in and they open the door. But I had just gone to my, my kid's pediatrics office, and there's a big complex there. So I'm like, opportunity gonna go to all the little offices real quick why not they're not screaming the kids aren't crying yet so until i start hearing the fussing <laughs> then we gotta go but right now they're being good so let me let me just go here real quick so i'm opening the door the lady behind the desk she's like um did you not see the soliciting sign there is no soliciting in here and i i looked at her with a big smile and i said oh i'm so sorry i said I was just here to give you some free samples and a free brochure. And she went, oh, well, in that case, come on over. <laughs> it was just like, it was, <laughs> it, was, it was it was like a complete, like, this Miss Frowny, like, what are you doing here? There's no soliciting here, like, attitude. And then I right. just smiled and said, I can't for some free samples. And, was, and she's like, oh, well, then you come on over. So don't <laughs> take those. Anytime people ask me, do you avoid the places that no soliciting? Honestly, I pretend like I don't see them most of the time because I look at it, the way I look at it is we are not, maybe we are soliciting, but it's how you approach the soliciting. So I'm going in to give free brochures and samples. Do the drug reps that go into the hospital, what are they doing? Right, soliciting. They're, well, they're, they're, they're going in and they're giving free samples of the drugs. So we are giving the Avon drugs. Look at it like <laughs> we are trying That's to get good, them yeah. hooked. We are getting them hooked like a drug rep on the Avon stuff. Okay, so you have to look at you. I like to look at myself like I'm a drug rep for. I know that's oh god, Avon. Don't I'm being funny. Here, okay, <laughs> I'm being funny here. 
But we want people hooked on our product, do we not? We want them yeah. hooked on. We want them hooked on our product. I think also people learn to love you and your personality and whether you're friendly. Now, if you walk into an office and you got an attitude, you know, and you're not smiling, I mean, and you're just whatever, then that lady might have said, no, thank you, and whatever. But I just walked in like a ray of sunshine right. and was like, but I'm here to give you. And here I am struggling with this basket and this, you know, one arm <laughs> like this, yep. one arm's pushing a stroller. And I still smiled and said, you know, I'm here for free stuff, you know, to give you some free stuff. And free stuff was all they needed to hear, and they were in. So yep. um, try new things. Try things that maybe – you know, you've never done before and see how it works for you. And don't let one person that may shoot you down or a few people shoot you down, let you stop you from trying it again. You know? Right. So, um, that's that. Let's see. Um, I was going to share a little bit about, um, did you have anything specific you wanted other than the why and the, no, no. Okay. So, and we're doing okay on time. Yes, we are. Okay. Okay, so goals-wise, really important, new or old in Avon. I don't care if you've been with Avon one day or you've been with Avon 30 years, 40 years. I think even the most seasoned rep will tell you that part of their success comes from goal setting. And I know it's in our fundamentals when you're getting new and you're taking those classes with the, my gosh, Avon University's come so far. If you are yeah. new and watching this and you have not jumped into Avon University, you need to. Um, but right. that is a very crucial part of running your own business is um, really setting goals, small term, long term, and then reevaluating and reassessing those goals. So my initial goal, again, didn't have a real big one. It was just like, can we afford some diaper money? Can we afford, you know, to take the kids to check it to you? Why, yes, we can. Then it was like, can I pay for some Christmas gifts? Why, yes, I can. Can I pay the grocery bill? Guess what, hon? You don't need to give me the full 200 this week. You can give me maybe $50 this week. I got the rest. I'm good, you know? And then it became, hey, hon, you don't need to give it to me at all. I got the groceries covered, you know? And then you don't need to give me gas money. I got the gas and the groceries covered. So, Set your goals, but also we can set goals all day long, all day long, but and be excited and be motivated and be ready. You may be listening to me. You may have listened to Lisa Scola, Teresa, Molly, um, anybody else that you've listened to. Be so motivated. Get off that call. You are ready to go. And then you're like, I'm so motivated, but I don't know what to do. And right. You have that, like, right. I'm motivated, but, but what do I do? So if you're not you can set the goals, okay, but you need an action plan. If you don't know how to do your action plan, that is where you need to talk with your sponsor, your upline team, and say, I'm so excited. I have these great goals, but I really am confused on how to get there. If you don't tell us as mentors that you're struggling with that, we don't right. know, and we can't help you. So um, please do that because as a mentor and a leader, that's what I want to hear from my team. I, I, you know, if, if they're struggling with something and they're not happy with their paycheck, they're not understanding how to reach those goals, then they need to let me know. I, I can't, I'm not a mind reader. We can't tell right. who's happy. This is their business. We always remember, keep the focus when you're working with your team. It's not about you when it comes right. to team members. It's about them. And if you keep the focus on them, guess what? It's going to come back to you. Okay, so um, really important that you know your goals, but you know your action plan. Because somebody could say, well, I want to sell $2,000 every two weeks. We all know that's a huge number, huge yes. number to sell every two weeks. And we've got people that are seasoned. Now, somebody new coming in saying, I want to sell $2,000 in my first campaign. We as a leader have to really break that down for them and say, I'm never going to deter them from it because they could do it. They could do it if they want to work hard enough to do it. Right. They need, they need to understand the game plan for that. And we have a rep right now on our team that has said that. And I talked to her leader and said, well, here's what needs to happen. And we set up this plan. Um, and my plan for her was you need to talk to her about, and I'm going to do a video on this, so I'm not going to get into depth right now. But I was talking to her about creating some bundle deals and working right. the customer numbers with the bundle deals and how that will quickly um, 
boost her to that $2,000 because it was like if you have $50 bundle deals times 10 people, you're already at $500. Then what if you do this with another 10 people, another $500? So we, you know, it's breaking it down so it's not daunting. I think right. um, a lot of times too, people look at our book here and their new rep and they're like, there's so many products. Am I supposed to understand all these products? I will tell you this, even as a long time rep, right, Leslie, these new products come out. Yep. We don't know everything either. We don't. No. We're learning with you along with the new stuff. We might know the classics, you know, like you can talk about right. always putting new stuff. So what do we have to do? We got to educate ourselves. We got to watch uh, the insider. We got to read the news that come into beauty insider. You got to look in your book and read. Um, you can go onto your e-store and you can get educated just from looking at at the information or each product on your e-store and then right. also going and getting the reviews of what people are saying about it and that can help you too so um gosh leslie i'm jumping all over the place am i driving everybody <laughs> you're doing good <laughs> you're doing I'm amazing all over the place. i'm all over the place between sales and whatnot okay so um, action, we're talking about action plan. So we want to make sure you have an action plan in place and that, you know, if you are leading other people, you help them find their action plan and that you reevaluate your goals um, all the time. Um, it's not one thing that's going to make you successful. It's a multitude of things. And being a beauty boss and a business woman or man, if you're watching this, um, you are the most, I mean, when it comes to, making the business work nobody else can drag you out of bed nobody else can make you go through put the books out um you've got to have some sort of scheduling going on here especially if you are working a full-time job are a mom on top of it a caretaker whatever busy busy life you have if you are not putting it in some sort of system as to what day you're doing what and you can be flexible with that that's why it's your business but if you don't have the actions written somewhere I use Google Calendar it is my saving grace. I don't know how I get through the day without it. Um, but I got to put hour to hour. What's happening? Doctor's appointment. Okay, I'm not free this hour, but I can talk to you from two to three uh, on Wednesday. Does that work for you? Yep, it works for me. You know, or what day am I out delivering? What day am I, uh, you know, doing this? You know, how does my day look each day? Um, to be really successful, I think that's, part of it i mean one piece because there's a lot of pieces to it it's not just you know what one person does may not work you know it's going to be different for each right. person right so find, find what works for you but i do know that scheduling and taking your business like a business and not like unless like unless let's go back to that unless you're just somebody that wants a discount and not interested in a business aspect of it then okay but if you're looking at this to make a lot more money and a lot, lot more money, then you've got to get scheduled. And you've got to know your goals and an action plan and reevaluate. And I don't know if you can see behind me, I got a dry erase board that I update. Yep. I have my Google calendar. Um, I just, it's the only way I can stay sane. I mean, <laughs> to, to keep it going, basically, you know, you have, right. to, have a, you have to have a plan in place and reevaluate and definitely Take your downtime when you need to because everybody needs to decompress. Right. Um, you know, if you are just Avon 24-7, which there's been many. If I'm, if I'm shooting for a goal for something, there are nights that I'm working later than normal. And my husband in the past has said to me when I was a newer rep, why are you up so late? Why are you not sleeping? At, why are you still up till 2 a.m.? I got big goals, babe. I got, I, got, I got to get this done. And he couldn't understand it then. He understands it now when he's like, oh, you're working late. What's going on? I'm like, big incentive. Got, got a big goal. And he's like, okay, no problem. You know what? Go. And he bring me dinner in here because I, he knows that I'm like so focused on right. matching whatever it is that is. And he bring me dinner, bring me drinks. I'm like, thanks, babe. Got to get back to work. You know, getting out my things. So, you know, if you have a support system, that's extra awesome too. Um, my husband's an amazing support system. Some of you may not have that. And. that this was just a little extra money kind of thing and didn't really see the big picture, if that makes sense. So are you still there? Oh, you froze for a second. I thought, yes. did we lose everybody? I'm here. So um, okay. I'm here. I thought I lost you from, 
Okay, good, good. Everybody can hear me okay. So um, does anybody have any questions or anything they want to know from your guests that are on? Because, I mean, I could just keep rambling about all different kinds of stuff. And I, you know, want to make sure if there's anybody with questions, I'm looking at the feed. I'll be happy to answer for you. Yeah, and I don't, I don't see any questions either. Okay. Yeah, I know sometimes it comes up after, so we just do. Right. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think it's a multitude of things that helps you be successful, finding what works best for you, sticking to it, be, be, be consistent, because if you decide to take a hiatus – and not put books out for two campaigns or even one campaign. I mean, if you're trying to build a new business and you just start skipping around, what does that right. say to the customer? What does it say to the customer base? It says, right. wow, you know, I saw her, now I don't see her, now I see her, I don't see her. It's very, you know, you know, sporadic. Um, Susie, it really depends, hon, on what you are looking to do with your business. Are Do you have a specific Thing you're trying to save for pay off something fun that you guys want to do um, maybe it's a small goal like getting your, your nails done uh, paying a certain bill that's the type of thing you want to look at what what uh, income level whether it's an extra fifty dollars hundred dollars every two weeks how will that impact your family what would you do with it if you had the extra hundred dollars every two weeks would you put it towards groceries? Would you? How would it help you? Does it save, you know, and, and I think that's what people need to look at. Um, setting goals that are pertinent to your family and to you right. personally. Because my goal and somebody else's goals are going to be totally different, you know. Um, so start with the small things, but have the big ones on the horizons. One of ours was to get an RV. We just got an RV. And now we're ready, yes, now we're ready yes. to... Now we're ready to um, trade up soon. We were ready to go for the next one. And on. So, I mean, that was something on the book like a long time ago on like my dream board, like to be able to do that, you know. So start with the small, go with the, you know, move on to the bigger ones. And as you achieve them, be like, I did it. Dream boards are wonderful. If you have a team and you have not sat down and done dream boards, you can do a virtual one if your team is all spread out. On the right. internet, you can do Pinterest board types. You can do um, – there was an Oprah site. I don't have a link right now that you can go on and do the dream boards and share them with your team. If you have a lot of team members local, then you can do it with the magazines and cut out different things that you want, whether it's savings, college, you know, whatever, and put cars, you know, anything that you're interested in. So I hope that helps answer your question, Good. Susie. Yeah. Good idea. Good information. Well, thank you. Um, I hope that it's helped. And like I said, I'm looking to see if there's any other questions or if you have any other questions, Leslie. I don't have any other. I'm waiting to see if there's any other questions. Yeah, don't be shy, guys. <laughs> like I said, I could go. I, I wrote down a few little key things, but then I was like, and then as I was thinking, I was like, what am I going to talk about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's part of the Italian in me. And also, you'll notice that my hand's always going because it's, the 50% yep. Italian, I can't not, I'm like, I got to learn to just keep them down. I just got to leave. <laughs> <laughs> going. Well, I would um, like to thank you. It was an honor to have you on today on our spotlight. Well, thank you so much. And I hope it's helped some of your team and um, I appreciate it. And you guys, good luck with everything that you do. And remember, uh, just, you know, stay consistent, persevere through hard times and you can make your business be super successful. So you guys have a great day, and I'll see some of you in Bermuda, I guess, this next week. And yep. um, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much, Leslie. Bye. Thanks, Lisa. Bye. -bye.